It's 6 a.m. in Rotorua on the North Island of New Zealand, and the athletes are making the way to the start line of the Vibram Tarawira Ultra Marathon. Now in its sixth year, this is a rapidly growing ultra distance running event. And for the first time, the event has been awarded the status of an official Ultra Trail World Tour event. And as a result, the race numbers have more than doubled in 2014. And the quality of the field has improved dramatically. It's been a breakthrough year for Paul Charteris, the event organizer. The first race was 2009 in March 09 and we had 67 runners back then. Uh, 66 of them were from New Zealand and we had one uh, overseas runner at that race. So it was very, very small. It was relatively new for New Zealand to have a race of this sort of distance, this whole type of concept. Um, so a very small field to start with. The race has always been kind of special on the calendar because it really is a beautiful course. It's a stunning run around four lakes and you follow the Tarawira River. There's such a diversity of scenery and you run from one city to another town from Rotorua to Kawarau and that's really attractive for these type of runners. What's really happened uh, for this year is the event has joined the inaugural Ultra Trail World Tour and this is where 10 of us, uh, the biggest racers in the world, have uh, got together and we've formed a true global circuit of trail ultramarathon running. So that's brought a lot of attention from uh, some of the world's best runners to come down here and participate. So there's a lot more runners here from uh, many more countries. In fact, uh, runners from 28 countries this year. Uh, my name is Hiroshi Ando. Uh, I'm from Japan, Osaka. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Victor Ferrando. Uh, I am from Barcelona, Spain. I like so much the, this country and, and uh, I choose New Zealand, my first 100 kilometers, uh, because I ever uh, saw uh, this beautiful country. And all the way from Oregon, USA is Sage Canada, the defending champion. Oh, last year was a blast. I really had a lot of fun. It was my third 100K and I knew a lot of the runners that I was racing, uh, especially from the US. I'd run against, uh, so I did have some expectation and there was some pressure, which I actually kind of like, because uh, it's kind of an extra challenge, but I was just really enjoying the race. Um, and I opened up quite a bit of a lead early on. I think I went too hard too early. I was worried I'd, I'd lose my position in the last 10K or so, uh, but I was able to finish and, and hold off uh, the other challengers, so I was really happy with how last year went. This year, Sage and the other athletes get the traditional Pafiri welcome. And it's the cultural experience that many of the athletes will remember as long as the event itself. But the scenery and the steaming baths and the bubbling mud, all part of this fascinating event in New Zealand's North Island. And those staying on after the event will get to experience extreme nature and extreme sport. Despite the calm start, the first drops of rain begin to fall, heralding the arrival of tropical cyclone Lucy. And over the past few weeks, the organizers have been tracking this cyclone, which certainly has the potential to be an event stopper. In the end, the threat of 120 kilometer an hour winds has led to a course change, and the runners will now run on a 70 kilometer course rather than the planned 100 kilometer route. But there are plenty who are happy with the decision. Luck. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, man. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and I think it was a great call. And I think it's going to be really cool that we're all going to see each other coming back. Yeah. For me, since it's still the beginning of the season, I'm actually uh, happy that it's a shorter race. Exactly. Still 65k. It needs to be respected. And uh, I've got a bunch of mates back in Australia that are injured, couldn't make it over here. So, you know, fact is, I'm uninjured. I'm running 65k through New Zealand a couple of years ago. I never would have even dreamed of that. So. Yeah. The people of Tepoia get the official proceedings underway with a rousing hacker and the 2014 Tarawira Ultra Marathon is officially underway. The standard excitement at the start of an ultra marathon. Both athletes and spectators and supporters 
Delighted to see the event getting underway. And the first few kilometres in darkness. Certainly testing those up the front of the field. But it's a steady, steady climb out of Rotorua. And pacing, even at this stage, essential. 850 athletes entered. And even in the first few minutes, strung out because of the pace set at the front of the field. Familiar faces at the front, Sage Candidate setting the pace early on. And the first change to the course comes early on with the runners doing a 10 kilometer loop out and back from the start line. Now this gives the crowd a real chance to see their athletes as they come through that 10 kilometer marker. Two Kiwis at the front of the field in the early stages. Sam Clark in the white top. Also got Martin Lukes there in the black top. And they're setting a fairly ferocious pace and have left the favourites behind for now. Michael Wardian, Kiwi Vajin Armstrong and Sage Canada, the defending champion. And now the runners off onto the original course as they head out towards the lakes and some of the best scenery in New Zealand. Still Sam Clark leading for New Zealand and he's built a 50 second lead over the rest of the field and Martin Lukes, his compatriot. And the leading women, Shona Stevenson, who's very highly regarded, being chased hard by Joe Johansson. Now she's relatively new to this sort of sport, but a very strong athlete indeed. And she's been putting in a lot of hours of training, apparently in the last 12 months. And we'll see how long she lasts in this 70 kilometer ultra marathon. Well, there is Johansson going past Stevenson and making it look easy on one of the uphill sections. And there you see the Blue Lake, which is the first of the lakes that they come across. Then as they head north, they'll go past Lake Okaraka and onto Okataina before turning back towards the finish at Lake Okaraka. Michael Wardian, Vajin Armstrong, easily identifiable in the red vest. And then at the back of that group, we've got Martin Gafuri, who's dropped his water bottle. That's teamwork. Thanks, guys. Certainly is. He may hang, hang on to them a little tighter on the next few sections. Still, we've got Sam Clark leading the way. He was 50 seconds ahead. Now it's cut to 40. And I wonder whether this is going to be the end of his lead. The chasing group and all the elite still very tightly bunched. Scott Hawker, one of New Zealand's best ultra runners, moving nicely, moving efficiently. And he's already got 100k race under his belt this season. Amazing opportunity now with um, you know the Ultra Trail World Tour and things like that sort of coming along that runners are able to travel to different parts of the world and um, I was just in Hong Kong in January for the Hong Kong 100 which is the first race so um, whereas I think maybe a couple of years ago that wouldn't have been happening as easily so um, yeah it's exciting and um, for me to maybe possibly in the next couple of years maybe have a more of a sort of full-time thing being the running um, if I can be running more and working less I mean that's a you know perfect in my book so yeah hopefully we'll you'll be aiming towards that so yeah on come the elite group and here is Sam Clark still holding on out front extends his lead by another 18 seconds so he's finding a, a little more energy the man in red is Vajin Armstrong from New Zealand Michael Aish is there Canada is also still looking very very strong and we've got Yin Kuo from China, also in that leading group. And on to the first road section, but it's short, and then they'll be back into the forest, which is the running that all these men enjoy. And there's Michael Wardian with the white cap. I've been second in the world at the 100K World Championships and third in the world in the 50K World Champs. Um, but I love running on trails too, so I... Um, just won uh, the Coastal Challenge, which was a trail race in Costa Rica a couple weeks ago. And there's a couple series now, and the Ultra Trail World Tour is one of those series. And so it has races in 
like Hong Kong. Um, there's just a race in the Canary Islands last weekend. Now there's this race in New Zealand for the Tarawara 100K. I'm always trying to strive for that next level and like hopefully like all these events and things that I do will help push me to that next level. And I think competition and racing is one of those things that allows you to really find the depths of what you're capable of. Well, he certainly got himself in a good position as they approach the aid station at Lake Akarika. Fluid food essential to take on in large quantities. This is Martin Gafuri being assisted by his girlfriend and soon to be pacer at the end of the race, Anna Frost, who's a world class ultra runner herself. Her advice should be useful because Martin doesn't have a huge amount of experience at this distance. Uh, it's been pretty new to me. Like I, I always stick to uh, up to marathon distance on trails, and uh, I decided last year to try and compete uh, a notch higher with international competition, and I decided to uh, compete in the Sky Running Ultra Series, in, in which I placed fourth. Uh, and this marked the beginning of a, like a more dedicated training, entering the New Balance uh, trail running team. Uh, and so from there I realized, wow, um, I might as well uh, get into uh, more international races because it's, it's a great scene, it's always a great field. Uh, you get to meet new people, you get to travel to beautiful places. So uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to me, not only to challenge myself running, but also to explore the world and, and meet new people. Now, here's the new leader, Fajin Armstrong, and he's certainly pushing the pace, but he'll be very aware that this is where Canada upped the pace last year and romped home to victory. Armstrong without a win this year, and here comes Canada, and he's got Mike Ace right on his heels, and they're moving well on this uphill section. Canada is so strong, I'm not sure Ace looks so comfortable, and they're closing in on Fajin Armstrong, and through they go. Well, I wonder whether that's just a little down period for Armstrong or whether we'll see him challenge for the lead later on. Joe Johansson not having to challenge for the lead. She's left Shona Stevenson a long way behind. Eight minutes the margin at the moment and those 30-hour weeks really paying off. Moving well also is Dawn Tuffery. She's moved up into fifth place and about two and a half kilometres behind the leader at the moment. Fourteen point eight kilometers to go to Okatina, and that's the turnaround point. And of course, it signals the big climbs of the race. That's where we could see a few casualties. And ahead of the runners now, fourteen kilometers of pristine New Zealand forest through to the next station at Okatina. Here they'll retrace their steps and head back to Lake. A character for the finish. And this is some of the most magnificent forest in New Zealand, packed with tree ferns and ancient native trees. Now the weather continuing to deteriorate, but under the canopy of the forest, they should be okay. Away in the drive, but... Into Lake Okatina aid station. And the fans awaiting the leader, and here he is, Sage Canaday, and he's flying, six minutes 53, clear of his nearest rival. Now, this man can run a 2.16 marathon, so we know he can do the speed, and he's got the record on Mount Washington as well, so he's not bad on the climbs. Well over halfway, and looking just as good as he did when he won in 2013. Now, you're permitted paces on certain stages of this race, and Canada has picked up Kerry Souter, who was the race winner back in 2009, and I think he might need someone of that quality just to stay with him. Second place is Yun Yingkuo of China. He's got a PB for 100 kilometers of 8.41, but finds himself over six minutes behind Canada at the moment. Had three big wins last year. Yingkuo certainly heading for a podium. This is Mike Aish, who went with Canada early on, now finds himself over eight minutes behind. I think maybe paying the price for pushing too hard. But you can never criticise someone for effort. And Mike Aish now has a pacer as well, which may help. Well, you know, like, this is very new to me. 
I've only, this is like my third month of uh, actually doing this, so uh, yeah, honestly I've got hardly any ideas. Um, it, it's been the biggest learning curve. Um, I think I've got a, a few races in the States um, coming up soon. Um, and for this first half of the year, um, the, the biggest one will probably be Western States, 100 mile. Um, and I'm quite petrified actually, uh, it's a long bloody way. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll continue to train, um, I like the work, um, I've got a strong body so I, I can handle a good amount of work and um, you know, we'll just see where it goes, see how it plans out. You know, I'm under no false impressions that you know, I'm going to you know, be anything you know, super special, but uh, you know, I'm trying my best to be. Well, we'll see how he gets on. Here is Scott Hawker. Now, he seems to be having problems the outside of that left leg. Yeah, no, 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 I can do it. Yeah, that's right, man. No, he just wants some of it. Well, this is going to be tough for Scott Hawker. His parents giving him support all the way round. Manuel Largo all the way from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. What an effort to get here alone. And into the aid station, Claire Walton, 29-year-old from Merseyside in UK. Now, she won the Tahoe Rim 100-kilometer recently, and so is on very good form. And also an enthusiast triathlete as well. I've no idea how many people are in front there. I don't know, I'm not, there's not many. Yeah, it was going quite well until, well, those guys are a lot faster than me and then uh, I've had a stitch for the last 15 k's and I actually started peeing blood. <laughs> well, due to the course changes, the athletes now find themselves retracing their steps all the way back to Lake Okerica. And a new third place man, Vajin Armstrong, still looking very fresh indeed and enjoying the soft trails. Mike Ace has dropped back to fourth place. He wasn't looking very happy when we saw him in the aid station. And second place and hanging on is Yun Ying Kuo, but still losing ground to the race leader. Looking a little heavy, a little laboured, the Chinese athlete. And certainly not making up any ground on this man. Sage Candidate, a steady pace, comfortable breathing. And closing in on the finish. With no sign of danger behind him. He'll see nothing. He's a long, long way clear. What a job from Sage Canada in the yellow vest. Kerry Souter steps aside, the pacer. And Canada is going to be the first man to retain the title in the Tarawira Ultra Marathon, a winning time of 5.33, averaging 4.45 per K. To be able to come back two years in a row and, and uh, you know, see all the hard work that race director Paul Charteris put in and he's able to invite me back again. It's just a huge honor and it's, it's really exciting for me because I love traveling and I love competing against the best international runners at all sorts of different venues, all sorts of different courses and different distances. And this is a really unique, special course that you don't really see anywhere else in the world. And a fantastic effort from Yun Kuo of China, one of 28 nations represented here today, and he's claimed second place. Vajin Armstrong moved into third place with 20 kilometers to go, and he's looked strong ever since, finishing very fast. On the podium yet again, that elusive win may be round the corner. And Mike Aish, who dropped out of the podium positions at the last aid station, comes in in fourth place. Another fine effort. I just was absolutely giving it death all the way along the right. I didn't even want to look back. I didn't want to know. Um, but my pacer did a great job. He just kept encouraging me, kept me positive. And yeah, I'm stoked. It was an awesome, awesome day. <laughs>
I'd try to see, you know, where I could fit with the top boys and, you know, they smashed me. Um, you know, I had a horrible part for about two hours and, uh, you know, at one point it was all I could do just to stand up. I was falling all over the trail. Um, it was bad. But, uh, you know, I pulled through it and you have those ebbs and flows and, you know, I'm, and I'm happy with myself I made it to the end. Um, I'm really glad it wasn't 100k because I wouldn't have made it. Scott Hawker overcoming the injury on his left leg and he's finished only 33 minutes behind the winner in fifth position. That's not a bad effort. And what about this? Joe Johansson has been leading the women's race for some 55 kilometers and she hasn't weakened. That metronomic step just keeps pounding out the kilometers. A fantastic effort from her. She's going to be just over seven hours today. Trying to hide the smiles, but inside she will be bursting with pride. For a relative newcomer, that is an unbelievable result. Oh, it's pretty surreal, really. I just, just, yeah. I just felt comfortable, I felt strong, and um, I just, yeah, it was, I don't know. It just, yeah, I didn't know how it was going to go, but I wasn't expecting to win. Claire Walton in second place in the women's, and she's not under threat from Dawn Tuffery, who's a further four minutes behind. Walton, who won the London Ultra Trail back in 2012, finishes second here in the Tarawera. And Dawn Tuffery smiling pretty much all the way round the course. She's really enjoyed her day out. A time of 7.16 and 16 seconds. Third place. Well, here are the men's results. Sage Canada certainly on his way to becoming one of the world's best ultra runners ahead of Yang Kuo and Armstrong. And what about Joe Johansson winning the women's event? 7.02.43 the winning time. Certainly her opponents in the Hillary Challenge, which is coming up, are going to take note. Claire Walton and Dawn Tuffery making up the podium in an astonishing event that's growing in both popularity and reputation and is nicely summed up in the Ballad of Tarawira. Written and performed by Carlina Migra. Let me tell you a little story about Tarawira. The whole event fills me with terror. Train so hard, but the day's getting nearer, and I still need to get some compulsory gear. It all takes place in Rotorua, and though the town smells like a sewer, on the trails the air is pure, and you might even see Ruby Muir. Cheeky tongue. 